you ever come across that famous definition of insanity? You're bats insane! You know, the one that's been making rounds for ages, supposedly attributed to Albert Einstein. It says, insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting different results. Now, it's not entirely accurate because the scientific method is a thing, but hey, it serves as a fitting kickoff for this video. Having stated this, here's my question. Have you ever felt like some gamers have zero common sense? Let me give you an example. The jester comes across two gamers in Leonia. The host is a mage fittingly called Crazy Potato, and his overleveled babysitter is called Loaf. Seeing the mage spamming his characteristic pew pews like a broken popcorn machine, the jester switches to Carrion Retaliation. For those sweet pancakes who don't know, Carrion Retaliation is an ash of war for shields that doesn't only act as a parry tool, it can also parry projectiles and turn them into three homing swords for its user. These homing swords will target an enemy and deal good damage. Simple enough, right? Now, we've reviewed the footage and the Jester parries a total of 12 spells during the fight with the overleveled Phantom, some of which land and deal damage to the Phantom, and one of them nearly sends Crazy Potato to the Pearly Gates. Keep this in mind, because it's important. After a harsh struggle, which was caused by the Phantom's high latency, the overgrown pea drop goes down by one of the set of homing swords from Carrion Retaliation. Keep in mind that this guy saw the Jester parry 11 f spells before getting sent to the ground by the 12th one. And he still just stood there like a deer in the headlights of a truck. So the phantom goes down. And what does Crazy Potato think is the best approach to the situation? Imbecile! Que asco que das! For some reason, the tuberculosis capsule over here decided that the pinnacle of strategy was to mindlessly vomit Smurf sperm against the guy that offed his friend by returning it 12 times in front of him before. I mean, are we wrong for thinking this was easily solved with common sense? Like, if the guy used your very own spell against you 12 f***ing times, one nearly killing you, wouldn't the best option be to not use them anymore? Why would you keep spewing them? What was going on inside your head? Did you do the same stupid sh against the tree sentinel? <laughs> Ugh, and I can already hear you say, but Rani, this clearly is an isolated incident. But no, it wasn't. It never is. Our dear Millicent plunges into the chaos with these two gamers in Limgrave. Her mission, just testing out the parry skill on the Shamshir, sizing up its success rate against the granddaddy of parrying tools. Selen's got a short on that, by the way. Check it out when you're done with our little rant. Now, Millicent wipes the floor with the vigorless phantom like it's a leisurely stroll in the ashen mist. Quick reminder to level vigor because, well... Duh. With the appetizer out of the way, she's got a clear path to test her parrying prowess against the host, a cunning character named Platypus. After a few swings and misses at setting up a parry, she switches to Carrion Retaliation, the parrying maestro, to get a grasp of the required timing. Millicent immediately gets a solid riposte, lets the slippery host scuttle off to heal and goes for round two. More attempts? No luck. Millicent, being the impatient soul she is, throws in a f**k it and pulls out carrion retaliation. Platypus gets an express ticket to Parryville. Population, him. He scurries away, heals once more, and well... You'd think that having a pet door opened in his stomach twice would make him reconsider his strategy, but that clearly was not the case. And this isn't only limited to PvE players, by the way. How many years you spend pissing on the toilet seat before someone told you to put it up? Some PvP aficionados will gladly hop on the same banana-hurling bandwagon. Take, for instance, this chap who monkey-mashed his way into the afterlife. Not once, but twice. against a foe sporting more vigour and damage than his wilting attempts could ever hope to match. For the love of the moon, man!
man! How about exercising a smidge of self-restraint and not treating the attack button like it's your own personal piñata? I mean, are we really asking for miracles here? We're not asking for John Coffey to revive good old Mr. Jingles here. We just want you to have your neurons make synapses for once in your life and realise that if you've tried something 10 trillion times already and it doesn't work, then maybe, just maybe, it's time to try something else. We're utterly dumbfounded. Is common sense truly that scarce in the PvP scene? Or were Millicent and the Jester simply filthy spammers? We've had that title thrown at us before, particularly by the fellow who got roll-catched into the afterlife. It appears to be a derogatory term attributed to folks who get on gamers' nerves. But why? Don't these individuals grasp that being spammed with something is precisely what they should desire? Wait, before you say anything, just listen, please. For those still in the dark, spamming is basically performing the same action, spell, attack or skill over and over. You'll wade through thread after thread, drowning in complaints about spamming, not only in Elden Ring, but also in the vast ocean of gaming, like fighting games. And then there's characters like this dude, quick to spit out his snarky remarks. But when someone extends a helping hand with a few options to navigate the spam-infested waters, oh boy, here comes his eloquent reply. Ready? Here it comes. Here it comes. There's a universal rule that everyone should follow. If you're going to talk, you better know your sh first. Because there's nothing more obnoxious in this world than a dude who thinks they know it all. But in reality, they're as clueless as a Discord mod in a gymnastics balance beam routine. Listen up, my little vanilla pudding. Countering spam is a park in the walk. Not being able to counter spam? Now that's what we call a knowledge check. You're not grappling with it because it's cheap. You're just grappling with the fact that you don't know how to waddle around it. Take, for example, Yashiro's grapple jump in King of Fighters 98. If he catches you with it, you're setting yourself up for an ass whooping. This move can either be avoided by jumping or by using the alternate guard glitch. But if you're oblivious to this, the first few times, you're likely to swallow it down with fries on the side. Sure, you can hit up Reddit and mold about its perceived cheapness, or you can just learn how to counter it and move on. At the end of the day, it's still common sense. If what you're doing does not work, for the love of the moon, do something different. With the wealth of information available on countering anything in the game these days, it baffles us that people are still wrestling with it. And I express this sentiment with a lingering hope in humanity, even though that hope has recently plummeted below absolute zero. Anyway, we simply wanted to glean your opinion on the matter, my sweet empanadas. As always, though, if you're one of these people, don't get us wrong. You can play however the f you feel like. But I gotta be honest, it makes me feel like each day we drift further from the moon. And yes, I mean that quite literally, as the moon inches five centimetres away from the Earth every year. Bye.